and thanks for visiting our website. Today we're going to learn how to put bearings and brushes in the 1G, the first generation of Ford alternator, and the 2G, the second generation Ford alternator, the one that has the built-in regulator. We're going to do these both kind of uh, shoved together into one video because the bearings are very, very similar. The only difference in a bearing and brush job for both of these is just the way the brushes are mounted. Taking the pulley off is just like the rest of them. We're going to use a half inch impact with a 15 16 socket. Hold on to the pulley with a glove or a rag. Take the nut off and the lock washer. Pulleys usually come right off. Underneath the fan is a thin spacer. There you see the head of the 516's bolt that's holding it together. There are three of them that need to be removed. Hold on to the back half with one hand and tap the front half off. Down inside, you'll see the two brushes and the two springs. The two springs come right out. The brushes will have to stay in until you take those two quarter inch head screws out to remove the brush holder. Then you'll notice of the three terminals that are, are together, the one that's closest to the battery terminal is the field terminal. There is a nut on that post, you have to take that nut off. It's usually a 5 16 socket. So here's all the parts disassembled from the brush holder assembly on the 1G Ford external voltage regulator. Here you see the two springs, the brush holder, the outside insulator, the internal insulator, the post that one of the rings on the brush goes to, the two screws that hold it down, and the two brushes. So reinstalling the new brushes, Start working with the brush holder with the square fitting up. We're going to put a spring in there. Load the brush in. And then here we have a straightened out paper clip. And just let it set right like that. Now you can see where we loaded both brushes. We put the spring down in the hole and forced it down in and used the straightened out paper clip as a retainer. The next thing we have to do is put the post up through the loop of the brush, run the string of the brush up through the groove, and then put the internal insulator down into place. Here we have a one inch socket that we're going to use as a brace around the outside diameter of the needle bearing. Set it down like that. Then this is a half inch socket, but just about, it doesn't really matter which size, we're going to use the drive end to set on top of the needle bearing and drive the needle bearing out. The slip ring end assembly we've just placed in an oven at 350 and we're going to leave it in there for about 20 minutes. What we're going to do in the meantime is remove the shaft and the bearing from the front plate. Place the assembly in a vise so that the rotor is loose. Take the pulley nut and screw it back onto the rotor shaft halfway. Spray the bearing and shaft area with your favorite brand of penetrating oil and wait five minutes. If there appears to be any Loctite or if you meet with any resistance from the next step, you can take a propane torch and heat up the area before you go to pound it out.
Rest of two by four on top of the shaft and then